All right, we are live. We'll um, just give everybody a few more minutes to, to roll in. Amy, are you here? I saw you come in. There you are. I see you. I'm here. How are you, Christy? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited for this one. This one's going to be awesome. <laughs> Amy always has great content. Well, fingers crossed, right? You always do, but it's okay. Are you are you guys on spring break over there? No, yeah. our spring break is at the beginning of March. So my kids are back in school and yeah. we're rocking and rolling. We get out early. We get out at the end of May. So do we now. Last year, I think, was our first year, at least my kids, but Gogo and I are like neighbors and her kids go until June, but yeah, but I'm in May. So, and it's nice. Yeah. I like getting out early. Love it. Yeah. It is awesome. So. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, it's just one o'clock on the dot right now. Um, we're still rolling in. So whenever you're ready to get started, just kind All right. of take it away. Hey, listen, I think the early bird gets the worm. So if you're here, we're rocking and rolling. Like mm -hmm. I think you teach people to show up on time or you might miss something really cool. So um, that's my philosophy of life. <laughs> really quick, that before we get started, how many of you are using social media effect? Actually, how many of you are using social media inside your business? Okay, by show of hands, I like it. If you don't have your camera on, can you just turn on your camera if you're in a place, if you're driving or sick in bed? fine, but just turn on your camera. <laughs> it's cool. No one's actually looking at your little frame as much as you think, but it changes the way you behave and it changes the way you, you like pay attention in a meeting. So how many of you, by show of hands, how many of you are using your, I actually love that you guys have cameras on with babies on your lap. Good for you. That's how my entire business has been built. Um, how many of you are using social media effectively? A lot of you raised your hand and said, yeah, I'm using it. Okay. How many of you are using it effectively? Okay, so there's a difference. Can we all agree on that, right? There's people that go to the gym and they don't have to tell you that they go to the gym because you can visually look at them and you're like, yeah, you're going to the gym. Yes, do we agree? Okay, so the same is true for social media, right? Because there's other people that they go to the gym every day, but like, I'm probably one of those people. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Go to the gym. Is it really all that effective? Or am I just like on an elliptical machine for 20 minutes and then being like, yeah, I go to the gym every day. Uh, there's a difference. Can we agree with that? So one of the main things is like the mindset of going pro, right? There's this idea of going pro with something. And when you go pro with something, you start to treat it like a job, right? So if we use the gym analogy, you're not just walking in and being like, oh, I don't know what to do with today. So I'm going to put a podcast in my ears. I'm going to go like walk on a treadmill or like go on an elliptical. Not that that's not great and not good for your health, it is, but it's different than the person that has the workout figured out, has the program figured out. They go in, they're in there for probably longer than you are. And they're every minute probably counts for 10X what your, your one minute counts for. Can we agree to that? Is that a fair statement? Okay. So the same is true on social media. So how many of you, I actually want you to go right now, open up the screen time on your phone, and I want you to see how long you're spending on whatever your social media is of choice, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, how much time, just write down how much time you are spending on the app. Okay. You don't have, I will not publicly call you out on it. Okay. Cause some of it is going to be alarming. Okay. Um, so, but we just write that down, write down how much time you're spending on the app on a daily basis. Okay. And then obviously multiply it for a weekly basis. Then multiply it for a monthly. How many so, Amy? Hours? Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Where do you find this at? Oh, all right. So go to, I'm actually going to have to look. Hang on, let me tell you. Go to your settings. I know how to do this because I've got a teenager. You want to know what I track? His screen time on everything he uses. Drives him crazy. I love it. Um, go down to, um, so if you go down, it says screen time right here in settings. It has a little purple like hourglass in it. 
It's like the tenth one down. Hit Are you an iPhone user? Yeah. Well, that's okay. your first problem. I'm just I kidding. believe on an Android. Hey, I love Androids. The only reason <laughs> I switched to an iPhone is to make everybody else's life easier that I work with. Oh, good. So. I'm glad that you realized how important that was. <laughs> yes, I did. So on an Android, I believe it's under the battery, like the little battery. Yeah, the battery settings or something. All right, thank you. Yeah, yep, under the battery. So just write down that number, okay? Get that number in your head. Now I actually want you to go back and I want you to figure out how much y'all have probably have done your taxes recently. So you know what you made last year, okay? I want you to write down the number of what you made last year and I want you to figure out your hourly rate. Do you know how to figure out your hourly rate? Take the number, let's say you made a hundred grand last year. This was my first year in real estate. Um, let's say you um, made a hundred grand. You're gonna divide that by 52 weeks because there's 52 weeks in a year. And then you're gonna divide that by how many hours a week you work. My first year, I don't work full-time hours. I worked about 10 hours a week my first year in real estate. Now I probably work between 20 and 30 hours a week. So know what your hourly rate is and then just go back and look at how much time you're spending on Instagram. So there's time spent consuming on Instagram and there's time spent creating on Instagram, okay? You have to stop consuming so much content. It's like, stop it. <laughs> Stop, unfollow a bunch of agents, like legitimately go do a social media audit, stop following a million agents. And um, one of our biggest fatal flaws is that there are a lot of ways to build successfully on Instagram. You can see that Gogo and I have different flavors. We're using a similar, we're, we're both making cookies, right? But she's making chocolate chip and I'm making snickerdoodles. Okay, we're both making cookies. Okay, but our flavor is a little bit different. Your flavor should be different than mine and it should be different than Gogo's. Okay, your target audience is different than ours or you're gonna have your, like you're different than us, right? So it has to like, I can give you my entire recipe, but until you like infuse 20% of my recipe with actually you and like things that your audience wants and things that people know you about, it's never gonna work, right? Because Amy and Gogo already exist, right? And so I can't be Gogo. Raise your hand if you can be Gogo. Gogo is actually a great example. Raise your hand if you can be Gogo. Okay, thank you very much. If you've raised your hand, you're a liar, okay? So like no one is gonna be Gogo. So stop trying to be Gogo. Like that's that's not going to work. So just don't do that, okay? That's like, um, I love basketball. Sorry if you don't follow basketball. But that's like, um, Chris Paul trying to be LeBron James. Okay, Chris Paul's not LeBron James. He's not, okay? So Chris Paul is deadly with the turnaround jumper in the paint, deadly. Guys can't guard him, okay? He does it all the time, right? Now, LeBron James is going to own the paint. Like you are going to get dunked on if you don't know what you're doing, right? So they play a different game, both really effective. Both have led incredible teams, right? So know who, what kind of player you are and then play your game. Now, they're both playing basketball, correct? Correct, yes, nod your head. They're both playing basketball, okay? They're both successful in basketball. Okay, great. So are we committed to playing your own game, yes or no? Yes, play your own game, okay? This means you have to know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, um, and like what your audience wants. Like who is your alpha client, okay? Um, Missy Brown says, don't unfollow me. You can unfollow every other agent, but Missy Brown. <laughs> um, I want it. That's actually funny. Um, see, that's how you should show up on social media. Cause that's funny, right? Like that's funny. People go on there to um, be entertained. So be funny. Um, isn't that why you love watching Gogo? -Go? Cause it's funny. Like when she lost her tooth, that was funny. That was freaking funny actually. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Thanks a lot, Missy Brown. Um, so play your game, okay? Stick to your game. Um, and we're gonna go through a couple of things of why, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the power of social media. Understand your why of like, what are you building? Okay, like what is the goal here? 
in real estate. Actually, drop it in the chat. Why did you get into real estate to begin with? Was it to work 60 hour weeks? Okay, freedom from what? Freedom from a nine to five, right? So you could work 24 seven, cool, right? More money, build your own empire, provide for your family, time freedom, okay? How many of you have time freedom right now? Please raise your hand if you have time freedom. Okay, so you don't have time freedom, which is why you got in in the first place. That means you need to think about how you're building your business. Like genuinely, think about how you are building your business, okay? I'm gonna go through my business a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how to like turn stories into scripts, okay? Social media is an entertainment platform. Okay, you watch TV to watch the show, right? So your social media kind of has to have a show. Doesn't GoGo like have a show? She's got a show, right? That you're tuning into. And then guess what she does? She also runs commercials inside her show, right? You read the newspaper. I mean, this is the pattern, okay? So we're gonna talk a lot about patterns. Let me get started on, oh, will you let me share my screen, Christy? Should be good, go for it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Can everyone see this? Yep. Okay, so I always say this is, um, Elon Musk says this. While it may appear lucky, this did not happen on accident. Everyone loves to tell me, oh my gosh, Amy, social media comes so natural to you. You're so lucky. That's bull crap. So if you're thinking that about anyone on social media, you're lying to yourself saying that let's like telling someone who like is playing D one sports that they're lucky. They got an offer from a D one school. No, they're not. They're not lucky. They worked for it. They figured it out. They practiced behind the scenes when you weren't watching. And now that they're on the main stage, you're like, Oh my gosh, that's, she's so lucky. That's not true. So get used to working when no one is watching. No one's applauding. No one's telling you good job. In fact, most people think you're stupid because they don't see the opportunity that you see. That's actually what it is. So here's a little bit of my story. I went back to real estate in 2017. I was pregnant with baby number four. My company, my husband's company got acquired that year um, and they wanted us to move to San Antonio. And it was me closing real estate deals that allowed us to stay here. Cause I thought, well, gosh, unless this is like your dream job, um, they can't pay you enough because I can't do what I'm doing here. I can't do that in San Antonio. So we turned down the opportunity in San Antonio without a safety net underneath us with baby number four due within three months. I had a C-section, all my babies have been C-section. Um, did not know how we were going to pay for the C-section. Didn't know if we were gonna have insurance for the C-section, had no idea. Um, so kind of put our backs against the wall there. Um, which is a pattern I've noticed. I work really well when my back's against a wall because um, I will fight my way out of that. Um, so my first year in real estate, I brought home six figures working about 10 hours a week um, and I was using social media. That was my leverage point. Um, that's where I found GoGo. I ran into GoGo on Instagram, wouldn't you know it, just like most of you. I moved my business over to eXp Realty I launched an online course, a national team, maintained my transactions and increased my profit 67%. Now, 2019, my baby was born in 2018. And 2019, I will tell you, was my hardest year. Like having a newborn baby on my hip, I it was hard. Um, and I think people in the industry don't ever tell you when it's hard or when it's easy. I think we sometimes want to just act like, oh, this is so easy. Just do it. No, it was hard. It was hard. Um, I didn't have a reliable schedule. I it wasn't sleeping at night. I had a newborn and three other kids in school and was working. Part it was rough. So maintained my transactions, but increased my profit 67%. And that was with the power of um, EXP, this idea of building a national um, team. In 2020, 2020 was set to be my year. Raise your hand if 2020 was set to be your year as well. <laughs> it was set to be my year as well. I had um, one of the biggest listings of my career in 2020 on the um, horizon. I had was rebranding a course, 
my team was set to grow. I was teaching at, I was on the calendar to teach at all these events. And then March showed up and was like, and actually you're not. Um, and so everything got canceled. I lost listings in 2020 because in March, what do you, what do you tell your buyer, your seller? I don't actually know what's going to happen. I don't know. I don't, like whatever. Right. So sellers decided not to sell. Um, and again, I think people like don't tell you some of those things sometimes. Right. Um, so I'm just going to tell you 2020 had its hiccups, but also it was the best year ever. It was the best year ever for me because it was the first time um, not the first time, I guess, right? In 2017, my husband's company was acquired. I had to figure that out. In 2019, it was figuring out how to do it with a baby, like a, a newborn baby. In 2020, it was figuring out how to do it when the world shut down. And 2020 was the year that mentally I just decided come hell or high water, I am building this business and I don't care what gets in my way. I'm going around it, through it, over it, whatever it takes, I am doing it. I saw the opportunity um, with transactions, courses, married with EXP, and the ability to build referral arms, build outside my local market, all of those things. And I decided, I don't care what is going on around me. I am doing this. And I think mentally, that's the first thing that has to happen is you have to decide to decide and overcome yourself. Um, and that happened for me in 2020. And so I'll be forever grateful for 2020. Um, in 2020, I launched Powerhouse, which is the name of my national organization inside of EXP. Um, so just like GoGo has Team GoGo, mine is called Powerhouse. I hosted my first Rise Retreat in October of 2020. Like, take that. Um, everyone was trying to shut down. And I'm like, actually, let's get together in person. That feels like a great idea. Um, I did not sleep for weeks about it, but there were people that wanted to come. And so we decided, we figured out a way to make it feel reasonably safe. And so that's what we did. Rise Retreat is now like a cornerstone in my business business, um, maintain transactions again, increase my profits to X. Notice in 2019 and 2020, I'm just maintaining my transactions, right? Um, there's a lot of different levers in your business that you can grow and you should have multiple revenue streams in your business. Good news is social media will support all of the revenue streams. Um, in 2021, I grew Powerhouse to 100 plus agents, got a Rolex from GoGo, um, doubled transactions, doubled retreats, launched mini masterminds, increased my profits again to X. While this may appear lucky, it did not happen on accident. Um, here's the deal. This is what I realized early on when I was using social media as a brand new little baby agent. Women influence 91% of home purchases. I have double checked this stat so many times, it's astounding, but I want to do just a quick gut check. If you are in a relationship, I don't even know, I'm going to say it wrong, so try not to be offended because I feel like there's too many rules of like how to even talk about men versus women or relationships or whatever. So for me, there's no, I, there's no way my husband is buying a house that I'm not 100% on board with. But there's a 100% chance that he might only be 75% on board. But if I'm 100% on board on a house, oh, we're buying it, right? And the reason for this is socially for a very, very long time, we have lived in a society where women tend to be home more than their male counterparts. Um, 2020 has actually shifted a lot of that dynamic. So I'll be interested to see if this statistic holds true. Um, but for a long time, home was more important to me than my husband, because I spent more hours at home. Even if I am a working mom, I still tend to be closer to home um, than my male counterpart. Um, and so I think that's why part of this dynamic, this statistic is so high. Um, also, we see single women um, buying at a higher rate than their single male counterparts as well. Um, the stat that bothers me is that only 25% of investors are female, right? So we're really good at the primary residence and influencing that purchase, but we play a little bit small when it comes time to like make real estate investments which is something I'm working on inside my powerhouse group, something I'm working on for myself. And I have a lot of female driven investors um, inside my powerhouse group. And so we're working on opportunities there to help more women um, buy real estate, become real estate investors. If you're a real estate agent, actually just by show of hands, I'm gonna stop my share here for just a second. By show of hands, how many of you got into real estate thinking, I'm gonna go um, close a bunch of transactions 
make extra money and buy investment properties. Raise your hand if that in the back of your mind was like something you wanted to do. Keep it up for just a second. Okay, a decent amount of you. Okay, so there's a pattern, right? A lot of people get into real estate thinking like, this is how I'm gonna create generational wealth. When you talk about getting into real estate for time freedom, financial freedom, really what you're looking for is generational wealth. Can we agree on that? Like nod your head if that is actually what you're after. Okay, so if you're really after generational wealth, you have got to do like a business diagnosis, diagnostics. You've got to run some diagnostics in your business and ask yourself if transactions alone are going to get you to generational wealth. Are they, I mean, genuine, like feel free to speak up. Genuinely, are they going to get you to generational wealth? Why not? Feel free to unmute, why not? Because there's only so many hours in a day and in a week and in a year. Like there's only so much one person can do. Right. So one of the patterns we see in real estate, right, is we all start out as little baby agents, right? And we're working with buyers and sellers and we're doing these transactions. But you, you have to get to the next level, right? So whether that's that you're going to build out a local team or build out a national team or you're going to start buying investment properties or you're going to have an online course, there's a lot of revenue streams you can build. Here's what happens to agents is transactions um, create such a huge short-term win. Like how many of you love closing day? Raise your hand if you love closing day. Yeah, and you're like, well, I just came home with 20 grand. That's the bomb, right? And so you want to get that, that high hit again, right? Because it's a high hit. It's 20 grand. That's cool. And you can say, and your hourly rate on transactions is actually pretty good. Um, now you have to mm -hmm. understand in, 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 inside transactions, I want you to understand, are you better at the prospecting side or are you better at the servicing side? Buyer side. You're better at the prospecting side? Not, I didn't say buyer or seller. Prospecting the deal or servicing the deal? I want you to write down which you're better at. I'm better at prospecting. Bobo's better at prospecting. Christy's better at servicing. Christy doesn't want to prospect. She wants to exactly. serve. Yep. Right? Exactly. So, so you need to know what side you land on, and then you need to marry someone else on the other side. Okay? So Gogo can spend all of her time prospecting because that's where she's good at. Okay? So um, Sherry Anderson, you said 50-50. You got to pick one. You can't be 50 50 on it. You have to pick one. Mm -hmm. So, if you actually like both of them, good. Like, that's cool. Good. But just pick one because one of the things is, is it's like, is it easier to make three batches of chocolate chip cookies or a batch of chocolate chip, a batch of snickerdoodle, and a batch of sugar cookies? They're all cookies. But if you're making chocolate chip, holy hell, just make the chocolate chip, right? So like, just stay in the lane because you'll get better faster at that thing. If you're always switching lanes, well, shoot, I'm tired, right? Um, so pick one and then double down on that one. So um, figure out if you're better at prospecting or servicing and start building your transactions based on that, whether it's a local team, a national team, um, figure out how to stay in your zone of genius longer and then also you need to figure out a plan. If your plan was to become an investor, raise your hand if you're setting aside money from your commissions to then go and buy investment properties. Good for you guys. Most real estate agents are horrible at that, myself included. Um, and then the other thing is, is raise your hand if you're setting aside any time in your day to actually like research and buy those investment properties. Okay. So see, like you can see how many hands were up. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy investment properties. And then when it comes time to like set aside the money and the time to do the thing, agents don't do it because they go and get what? Another transaction, right? Which is this short-term win. It's a good short-term win. Don't get me wrong. It's a great short-term win, but you have to spend some time sourcing some long-term wins. If you plan, I, I would like to retire at some point. Raise your hand if you'd like to retire. Yeah, me too. So you've got to spend 25% of your time at least sourcing long-term wins. Long-term wins. 
okay? Long-term wins are investment properties, online courses, national teams, local teams, right? Um, and so you start out in the transaction business, but then you're either gonna go into the investment business or you're even gonna go into the agent business, right? Um, if you run a team, you're now in the agent business as well, okay? And that's just a form of growth inside your business because these are like leverage points, okay? Going back to my screen here now. Okay, so this is where we talk about you are more than a real estate agent and you need to start behaving as more than a real estate agent. Um, Michael Jordan was a basketball player, right? He's a great basketball player. Um, he earned $94 million playing basketball, but he is way more valuable to like that community than just as a basketball player, correct? Um, he earned $1.7 billion in other business endeavors by leveraging his basketball career. So you've got to figure out how to leverage your transaction career if you want that generational wealth. If you don't, feel free to keep going into doing transactions. They're, they're great. They're lucrative. It's great, right? There's a lot of athletes that just go play basketball or go play baseball and then they're done and that's all they ever are right? So you have to become more valuable to the market, right? And this is where social media comes in. When we talk about creating leverage, um, Michael Jordan created leverage by partnering with Nike and Air Jordans. I mean, my 10-year-old had never even seen Michael Jordan play in real life. I grew up watching Michael Jordan. Um, I'm a big Suns fan. So like those 92, 93 season, like if you want to talk stats on that final series, I'm down. Um, so I grew up loving to hate Michael Jordan, right? Just like um, I love to hate Kobe Bryant too, because they were like the arch nemesis of the Suns. Um, but they became more valuable to the marketplace, which means they make more money. So here's where social media comes in. Um, are you ready to be an influencer? Are you ready to become an influencer? How many of you, um, by show of hands, feel like kind of just threw up in your mouth a little bit when I said, are you ready to become an influencer? Just own it. Just drop it in the chat. If you're like, yep, I want to throw up in my mouth. Okay. I think I did throw up in my mouth. Yeah. Because <laughs> doesn't that word create like this negative connotation of like, you yeah. know? Yeah. So um, you have to say, oh, okay, Beth, this is a great question. She said, not throwing up, but thinking, can I influence? Um, Beth, how many transactions do you do in a year? Or like how many, I mean, how many, do you have kids, Beth? 18 transactions. Okay, well, you just influenced 18 people, right? Like when you really think about, like the spoiler is, is that everyone is actually an influencer, whether you want to be or not. And you're either influencing people to greatness or kind of discouragement, like, oh, that's so dumb. Like, why is she doing that? Okay you're being an influencer, <laughs> whether you want to be or not, you are. Um, so with increased influence, there is increased success, right? In order to do more transactions, you have to influence more deals, right? So what is an influencer? An influencer has integrity and influence nurturers, nurturers, influencers have faith in one another, influencers listens, Influence understands people, enlarges people, helps navigate for people, connects people, empowers people, and then they reproduce other influencers. Go ahead and, and change the word influence for leadership. Do all of these hold true? Without leadership, there is no success. Leadership has integrity, leadership nurtures, has faith, leadership listens, leadership understands people, leadership enlarges people, leadership navigates, leadership connects people, leadership empowers, leadership reproduces other leaders. Who is ready to be an influencer now? Drop it in the chat. Say yes in the chat if you are ready now to be an influencer. An influencer is simply a leader you would like to follow, right? So you have buyers and sellers that are following you. 
right? Because they appreciate your leadership in their transaction. So you must increase your leadership capabilities, right? Once you become an investor, well, you should put together more investment deals for your buyers and your sellers. Where's a great place to tell that story? This is the evolution of leadership. At first, you are a dreamer. You are inspired by another creator, leader, influencer. You see the pattern of business and consider using it to transform your business. How many of you have been inspired by GoGo's business? Drop a me in that chat if you have been inspired by GoGo's business. Okay. Right? That's GoGo being a leader, correct? Yeah. A reporter. The next phase of leadership is a reporter. You use the pattern then document and report on it, sharing your transformation story to inspire others. Has Gogo shared her story and has it inspired you? Drop a yes in the chat if she has shared her story and it has inspired you, okay? Now, this is where your transformation story begins, is when you start sharing your story. Okay, Julie says, yes, but I feel like my story is boring and not compelling. Oh, we're gonna change that today, right? Where as a reporter, you're starting to share stories. And when you do this, you will begin to transform your business. The next step in leadership is creator. You've seen the pattern, you've used the pattern, and now you create new patterns inside your business. Share them and inspire other dreamers to get similar results. Drop a me if you can see Gogo creating new patterns in her business. Right? Okay, so you need to be able to see the pattern and then use the pattern. And then you can start creating the pattern, right? The next level of leadership is you become a servant guide. Your focus shifts from personal growth to contribution. You shift from personal growth to contribution because it is only in teaching others that you find a new level of growth for yourself. What level is GoGo at? Drop it in the chat. Right? She's at the servant guide level, correct? What happens when you teach someone a concept? Like, I'm gonna just stop my share here for just a second. Um, who can tell me, who knows, raise your hand if you know how to tie your shoes. Raise your hand if you know how to tie your shoes. Okay, Chris, I don't know you. Chris Geddes, 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 is that how you say it? Okay, Chris, unmute yourself. Without looking at your shoes, explain to me how to tie my shoes. Well, good gosh, uh, you cross the laces and over and under and make a bow and around it and back through and pull them tight. Okay, pretty good. <laughs> but if you've never tied your shoes before. That's tough. Well, are those directions I can follow? Not really, right? No. Okay, so here is the point, is when you put yourself in a position of teaching others, who learns the most? Like if Chris was in a position where he legitimately had to get up and teach people how to tie their shoes, what are you going to go do, Chris? I'm going to get a shoe and tie it. Right. And you're going to pay real close attention and you're going to get your verbiage dead on, right? Yep. So that it can be understood by the end consumer, right? Yep. Who ends up benefiting? Who's business? Like if we take this with a business thing, right? A business concept. When I teach on social media, who do you think learns the most? Typically we do as teachers. I do, right? Yeah. Because now I've learned, oh, wait a second, what was that? Like when I'm casually going along and deals are dropping into my DMs, cool, cool, whatever. But then when you have to go and explain it to someone, you're like, okay, well, wait a second, what made that deal drop into my DM? 
Okay. Well, now I've got to go back and identify the thing that triggers the deal into my DM. Okay, well, shoot, now that I know that's the trigger point, do you think I'm not going to double down on that? Oh, I'm doubling down on that, right? So you need to put yourself in a position where you are starting to teach concepts that you already know. And every single person in here, unless you are like a band, actually, even if you are a brand new baby agent, you can put yourself in a position where you're collaborating and learning and you're growing and you're starting to like formulate concepts, right? Um, it's going to be a little messy at first. That's normal, right? Um, but everyone in here has a skill that someone else can learn from, right? If you're at, if you're a part of Team GoGo, -Go, you should find something to teach on, and you should message GoGo -Go and say, "I want to teach inside Team GoGo. -Go. This is your audience." And it's not to be helpful to GoGo. -Go. You want to know who it's helpful to? Is it helpful to you? You're the one that wins when you do that. Because then you can start identifying the trigger points in your business, which means then your business gets better. <laughs> your business gets better. I will repeat that again. Your business gets better. There's a reason GoGo's business has grown so fast. She is teaching all of the time, which means she constantly has to be a learner. Constantly, right? She constantly has to be learning. Okay, going back to this. Here is your recipe um of instagram okay you've probably seen this a million times you've seen it a million times because it's not knowledge that you lack when it comes to instagram is discipline it's not knowledge that you lack it's discipline and patience instagram is a long-term game right gogo has been building on instagram probably as long as i have i've been on instagram for more than 10 years okay and so now it's like, oh my gosh, that comes so natural. Well, it damn well better at this point, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I remember I remember when I first started working with her and I didn't understand the, the social media thing. And I think a lot of people still look at it like that. Like, oh my gosh, you're post posting on social media. It, like the importance of it, I didn't get it in the beginning. And now, oh my gosh, like, I'll do anything. I'll take over the whole business and you do social media because that's what's building. That's that's where that's we're what at. Drives the business. Exactly. Right. Yeah. How many of you tell yourself that you don't have time for social media? I'm dropping my share so I can see you all. Actually, just drop it in the chat. How many of you say I don't have time for social media? Yeah, type in guilty. Actually, I love that word, Brittany. Thank yeah. you very much. Mm -hmm. Type in guilty if you convince yourself, I don't have time for social media. Mm. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Okay. So um, Katie says, I lack in the heat of the moment what to talk about. Great. There's a solution to that problem. I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a stigma about it being a waste of time, but can I just tell you something? I work part-time hours from home with four kids driving carpool, and I rank number 21 out of 78,000 agents at EXP when it comes to agent growth. Do those numbers make sense to you? No cold calling, no, like, all organic growth. Honestly, does that make sense to you? It shouldn't. Like those numbers should not like let that sink in for just like just a second. I moved over to EXP after I've been practicing real estate for two years. It's not like I was some big mega team lead producer. I was not. I was not. I was doing five million dollars a year in transactions. Raise your hand if you do more than five million dollars a year in transactions. Most of you are going to raise your hand. So that means you're a better agent than me. Cool. That's awesome. So like that I moved over and I saw the opportunity for social media. I had built my, my transaction business on social media and I continue to build my transaction business on social media, but I knew I was going after generational wealth. Okay. And I'm also in a position where I am, I was not the breadwinner when this whole thing started. I, this was just like a side hustle that actually is now the hustle, right? All of a sudden you're like, well, wait a second. I saw the opportunity at EXP and I'm like, oh, I can keep doing my transactions and I can 
I, I had agents reaching out wanting help on social media. That's why I created an online course. That's why I linked arms with GoGo -Go, because she was the only person that I saw building similar to me. And I thought, great, I'm going to go stand right next to her because then together, like it's just like that pull of a magnet, like it gets stronger, right? And um, so I already knew so the power of social media. Um, and then EXP solves the problem of location problem. Like real estate agents have the same problem as dentists. They run into like a locational barrier, right? Like it doesn't matter how good of a real estate agent you are if you can only service four zip codes, right? Like you, there's this hard ceiling on that, right? So um, anyways, the numbers, like so when we talk about finding leverage in your business, this is a huge leverage piece. It's a huge leverage piece. So when you convince yourself, I don't have time for that. Are you crazy? Like you don't have time not to. You don't have time not to. And so I get, it's like, oh, well, I don't know how to post this. I don't know how to do this. Okay, go to Google and a YouTube video will show up. Like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You would never do that on a transaction. If you don't know how to do something on a transaction, how hard do you work to figure that out? You call the broker, you call your agent friend, you Google it, you watch a YouTube video, you figure that the freak out, right? You're nod your head if that is true. Yes. So you will do that to protect your client's deal, which you should, but you will not behave the same way to build your own damn business. That's crazy. That's crazy. I would refer out transactions to make time to build social media. <laughs> That's how, like, long term, it's such a huge win. Okay. I'm being a little bit dramatic. Make, be your own CEO, make your own decision on that. Okay. Um, yeah, did you say you would give up transactions to do social media? No, I said I would refer out some transactions. Like if I have too many transactions on my plate and that's the excuse you're giving yourself, go ahead and attach some money to it. Go ahead and attach some money to it and say, okay, I'm going to allow myself to have be working five transactions at a time or whatever it is. And anything over that I'm referring out because from hell, wake up an hour earlier. Like, go look at your screen time. Stop scrolling. Stop. Like, go look at your screen time. I wake up at 5 a.m. I wake up, so I have from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. every single day. That's why I get pissed when people are like, oh, it comes so lucky to you. You're so lucky. It comes so natural to you. Bullshit. Say that to my face, and I will not be nice about it. Like, that's bullshit. I've worked vacations. I'm up at 5 a.m. I work from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. every single day. I work on the weekends when I need to. Like, and I have to work in the pocket of my day. Is it still only 20 to 30 hours a week at this point. Yeah, but you wanna know what I'm doing the other hours of the day? I'm making dinner and I'm driving carpool and I'm processing junior high emotions all day with my kids, which trust me, I'd rather negotiate a deal, okay? So I'm negotiating with a three-year-old and a 13-year-old the other 24 hours of my day. So it's not like there's a lot of downtime, okay? Like there's not a lot of downtime in my day. There's days I don't eat lunch, there's days, whatever. I don't care, the long-term win is sitting right there. And if I do it for three years, I get to live like no one else the rest of my life. So that's what I'm doing. And I don't care what people think about me on social media. The people that want to sit and talk to me about it at the park of like, oh my gosh, whatever, or he's so dumb or she's so dumb. I don't care. There's three types of agents. There's talkers, there's takers, and there's creators. Talkers love to talk. They're always going to talk. All they do is talk about what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, what you're doing, how they would have done it better. They talk, 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 talk. That's literally 85% of all agents. They love to talk about everything they're going to do. Cool. You talk all you want. Then there's takers. I love a good taker. Takers will create, takers will take opportunities. They see the opportunity and they take it. They're decisive. They will do really well in this industry. They will make good money. They will be successful and they're key to the industry. Takers see opportunities, decide to decide and go for it. And they like to tell you how smart they are too. Creators create the opportunities. Creators create the opportunities that takers take and that talkers talk about. Which is go-go.
Which is she? She's a creator. Yeah. She's a creator, right? So the financial windfalls comes when you're a creator. Michael Jordan created that opportunity, right? And a lot of our smart people have followed behind him, right? And they've iterated on it. They should iterate on it. Everyone should iterate on what GoGo has built and then you should build it bigger, better, and faster than GoGo's built it because she's paved the damn road, right? Like when you think about a dirt road, you got to go in with like a machete and clear that thing, right? And there's so many people now that have come before. That's what made it easier for GoGo, right? And it's like, so any, but anyone coming behind me and GoGo, you should build bigger, better, faster than us because the road is freaking paved. Here's the recipe. Here it is. So you have to have that discipline to decide to do it. Every post needs to do one of three things. It needs to educate, entertain, or inspire. If you can edutain, which is educate and entertain at the same time, winner, winner, chicken dinner, okay? That's go-go. She's gonna educate you and entertain you at the same time. And she's gonna inspire you because you're gonna think, holy crap, if she can do it, I can do it. Right? How many of you have thought that watch like consuming Gogo's content? If she can do it, I can do it. Right? Okay. You can, but you're going to need to be disciplined. Okay. So here is how someone said, oh, I don't know what to share in the heat of the moment, whatever. I can't think of what to share. So you have to set yourself up with a structure and a routine that you always have something to share. Because don't kid yourself into thinking that Gogo and I like to show up every single day on social media. That is not true. That is like not true. That's like saying I like to make dinner every day. I don't like making dinner every day, but I like the result of making dinner every day. I like my family around the dinner table. So I am making dinner every day because I like this result, right? So here is your pattern for always having content to share. Run, well, number one, it stands for the, I love acronyms, stands, says rise. That's like my retreats in my course. Rise daily, you have to do this every single day. You need to read something relevant every single day. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You have to read every day to fill your cup with new ideas. You need to be on the front end of new ideas. If you're looking for leadership, read anything by John Maxwell. Um, Atomic Habits is a great one. Expert Secrets. Like the amount of books I have read. Uh, Growth Mindset by Carol DeWick is amazing. Um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. 10x um my audible oh i love relentless if you love like sports and this is the guy that's written by the guy that coached um michael jordan if you like like no bs like give it to you straight when i need a kick in the pants i go and listen to like what he has to say um leaders eat last this is marketing um the circle maker I, I could go, I mean, I could go on and on and on. My audible list just goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay read every single day. Um, interpret their ideas. Those ideas are not your ideas. Listen, and then interpret and iterate on them. Think them into new ideas. Apply them to real estate. I love taking a fashion blogger's idea and applying it to real estate. That's why I literally went back to real estate is I was actually had an online storefront and I was working with fashion bloggers and I was like, oh, their business model is super cool. They sell someone else's inventory for a small percentage. So do real estate agents. <laughs> they do the same thing. And I was seeing these fashion bloggers, just so you know, these fashion bloggers are making over half a million dollars all day, every day, um, just using social media, selling someone else's inventory for a small percentage. Um, so I literally shut down my previous business so I could try social media on in real estate because I just thought it, there was so much opportunity, right? Um, share. Ideas grow best when they are shared. This is where you add value and it forces you to be concise. Um, this is where you put yourself in a position to teach something. Find, like, come up with the idea, interpret on the idea, share the idea, and then your execution is next level, right? Because you've put it through this, like, strainer. Um, so then you start executing those, your, those ideas inside of your own business, okay? Are you ready to like talk about how to actually do this on social media now, now that you know? Okay, 
Number one, you need to build a landing page with an email opt-in. Um, where are you taking people? Like if you're posting on social media, what's the end game? This is why social media is ineffective. If you're, if you're using it and it's not driving results, this is why. Like, where are you taking them? Do you have a plan for them? There's somewhere for them to go where you're gonna like follow up with them or like genuinely, I would feel free to unmute and tell me where you're taking them. That's not even something that I had thought of yet. For some reason, I was just under the assumption like, oh, I post reels, people are gonna like slide into my DMs and just be like, hey, do you wanna sell my house? <laughs> that's like, that's where I thought this was going. Okay, that does happen. That does happen. Okay. But again, this is a business, right? So we want it to be consistent. So how do they know to jump into your DMs, Kaylee? How do they know to jump into your DMs? Do you tell them to do that? Every once in a while in a story, I'll be like, oh, message me if you want more information, but that's pretty much it. Okay. So like when you go to Nordstrom, do you know like where you're supposed to check out? Do they kind of tell you where to go? Yeah. All the signs. Yeah. They make it pretty easy. Like the point of sale is pretty easy, right? So you've got to take the friction off of this point of sale. A lead is not a lead until they um, are off the app. So you're literally gathering a community, right? You're building a community. Gogo's built a community. I've built a community. You're building a community and you're the leader of this community, right? But until you take them out of that community and off the app, it is not a lead. Instagram's like a cocktail party. Raise your hand if you go to a cocktail party to do actual business. Does any business get done at the cocktail party? No, it does not, right? But you look good. When you go to the cocktail party, don't you look good? Tell me what you do when you, like, really, just go through the, like, get dressed, do your hair, shower, put makeup on. Like, you might buy a new dress. You might put on a suit. You might put on a tie. No one in here right now has a suit and tie on or a cocktail dress, right? Okay, but when you're on Instagram, your feed should look like the cocktail version of you. Just so you know. How many of you make, how, who feels uncomfortable with that? Does that kind of get rid of the sense of like realness and just connection on of me like on an everyday basis? Okay, so this is, See, I like it. I'm using it better to be real. Okay, I'm talking about in your feed, right? It's a cocktail version of me. I'm well-spoken. I'm dressed. I've got my makeup on, right? What happens at a cocktail party? It's like small talk, right? Now, and that's kind of like in your stories and in your DMs. In your small talk, you might be a little bit more, right? When you know the person, like you're going to be a little bit more unedited. So on your stories, yeah, I'm a little bit unedited. Now, people on my stories, they see me in my gym clothes and they see me without makeup on. But again, who's my alpha client when it comes to transactions and actually when it comes to agents? Who's my alpha client? Moms. What? Moms. Yeah, 40-year-old females. I love a good 40-year-old female because she's paid her dues and that she's buying her dream house. So guess what? My Lululemon is the same as her Lululemon. Isn't that her morning routine too? right? Doesn't she go to the gym in her Lululemon? She does. So I can talk to her like that, right? That's real to her. That makes sense? So you need to know who your alpha client is. Who's your alpha client? I know you service all sorts of deals, but half the deals you service, you probably don't want to service. So position yourself to service deals you like. I love working with physicians. I love working with move up clients. I don't really like working with first time home buyers. There, I said it. Okay, don't care. It's not a good use of my time all the time. Does that mean I don't want them to find a house? No, that means I want to run a successful business and take care of my family. And I'm more loyal to my family than I am to anything else. Okay, so it's a business. You're not doing people favors. So if you don't like working with first time home buyers, refer them out to an agent that enjoys that. Great, win win and then spend more time bringing in your alpha client. You need to know who your alpha client is and who you're, what you want in that regard. Okay, 
So um, you need to have an exit strategy, whether that's you're dropping them to your KV core page, whether it's to a landing page. If you go look on my stories right now, oh, it's probably already expired. What was the funnel I posted on stories yesterday? Did anyone see it? I posted like 10 funnels on stories yesterday. Did anyone see it? Who are my actual friends in here? Where are you? <laughs> Do you, see? you did a home value one. I, okay, who said that? Where are you? Lillian. Lillian, you did what did value. I post yesterday? Uh -huh. We talked about, you know, the math around it and then building equity and you kind of went over like by state what the average equity was and then you were kind of like are you curious what your home value is and you linked them to your right. KD core okay so that was one of them so, and then oh go, ahead. oh go ahead and then we're going to break these down and then you did a powerhouse one you kind of like illustrated um the training we had yesterday with and then you kind of illustrated different people from different states. And then you're like, hey, you want to learn more about Powerhouse? And you linked it to your Powerhouse page. Okay. And then I also posted like a coming soon link, right? Oh, if you want to know houses that are coming soon, right? Now, listen to what, okay, someone says, I don't know what a funnel is. A funnel is just how you funnel your client, right? Through the sales process, right? It starts really wide and then you start funneling people down. Okay. Um, so I posted... Um, a home value report. Did I get on stories and be like, hey, if you want a free home value report, click here. Because no one gives a rip. That's self-serving to me. Okay, so how do I add value to them? Remember, you have to become, you have to act like more than a real estate agent. You have to become more valuable. So instead, I did the math of saying, hey, if your uh, balance market will hold four to six months worth of inventory, I'm just running like hot sheets right now. And there's 2,739 homes that are currently under contract or pending in some sort of way. Um, as far as active or coming soon listing, there's only 1,207. This is why we are having such a shortage in the market, which is driving prices up, right? And then I said, if you're a buyer, you need to know what's coming soon before it hits the market because you are going to have to move right away on it. And you're also gonna to need to have your loan be fully underwritten, right? Am I educating them? I'm educating them, right? And then I'm gonna solve their problem for them and say, hey, I'm emailing out homes that are coming soon every two weeks. If you wanna get on this list, click here. And in order to click there, I built a landing page through Flowdesk. I don't care what email service provider you use. It does not need to be Flowdesk. I like pretty things. My alpha client likes pretty clean things. That's why I use Flowdesk. Like I'm looking at like Chris and Jeff. Your clients might not care. They might actually want to look more technical. Genuinely speaking, okay? My husband could care less. He just wants it to be more data-driven. Right. And, and so that's like knowing your client's psychology and then doing that. How many of you have kids? Raise your hand if you have kids. Okay. Raise your hand if you've been able to parent all of your kids the exact same way. Okay. Thank you very much. My son, I can smack in the back of the head and say, knock it off. And he's like, okay. Right. My daughter, I freaking got to package it up, put a bow on it and make her think it's her idea. Okay, great. I'm making adjustments as a parent, make an adjustment for your clients. Okay. You got to be a chameleon a little bit but know who your alpha client is, right? I know when I'm talking to a group of boys, I can go pretty hard at 15 year old boys. I can tease them, I can mess with them and they will laugh at themselves. 15 year old girls, heck no. Like you tease a 15 year old girl and she's literally gonna murder you in your sleep. That's what's gonna happen, right? So I'm a different person with my daughter's friends than I am with my son's friends, I'm a different person. But know who you wanna work with, with your clients, you get to choose and then behave accordingly, okay? So I use Flowdesk. Use whatever the hell you want. Don't spend so much time thinking about it. Pick one and go. Like, pet peeve. Don't spend so much time deciding to decide. Pick one and go, and then you'll know if you like it or not. Um, so they go to that email landing page. Great, I'm adding subscribers to that all of the time. Those are buyers. Those are buyers, right? And then I send them emails of homes that are coming soon to the market. And at the bottom of the email, I say, oh, click here if you want to search homes and they drop into my KB core. So then I have even more data with them, right? If you want to search every, this is just what's coming soon. If you want to search everything that's available on the MLS, click here, click here, right? So now that's my lead, okay? 
Um, now, if I'm going to post a reel about that, I'm going to have a call to action. DM me with coming soon and whatever, and I'll get you the list, right? I'm going to give them another call to action. So when they see the reel, they know what to DM me, right? And I know which funnel they're talking about. Because you know what I like to do every day? Build funnels. I build a funnel, I share a funnel, I service a funnel. That's what I do all day. Okay? I like to process. Oh, Amy, do you build all your funnels in Flowdesk? Is that how you build them? The email? Sometimes, funnels? no. Like my free home sellers report is a KV Core report. And you mm -hmm. want to know what's really great is I know KV Core is going to send them the wrong home valuation number. I'm still sending them that one. So then I can follow them up and say, hey, you know what? This market's actually moving so fast that algorithms can't keep up with the data. Appraisers can't even keep up with the data because appraisers are looking at data that is 30 to 60 days old. So there's actually not a computer generated home value report that's actually going to be accurate right now. FYI. It's not going to be accurate. Yeah. It's not. So then I get to call them and say, oh, you want to know what the number is actually closer to this? Oh, now they need. Yes. Right. So when you share things like you got to share it in context. OK, so where are you taking them? Don't begin your content strategy until you have an exit strategy. I build the end first. Um, so you then you have to create content that users will opt in to receive. This is the part about the story. So sellers, I'm not like, hey, here's a free home value report. I'm not doing that. I talked about like which markets had received the most equity gain over the year. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you will not believe in California, the average, you know, homeowner gained $117,000 of equity in their house. What? Everyone knows they have a lot of equity in their house, but when you put it in context, it's like, holy crap, right? And I live in Arizona and Arizona was the number three state. This is why this was a valuable piece of content for me to share because I think Arizona gained $91,000. The average homeowner gained $91,000 of equity in their house. So I would love, who wants more, who wants more sellers? Me, right? So you have to create content that will convert for them to opt into. Because I'm gonna tell you something. My alpha client, let's call her Emily. She has a name, her name's Emily. She like, she's gonna buy her move up house, like her dream home. She's on the verge of buying her dream home or she's like, put her husband through medical school or her business, her, their careers are at a level where they're gonna go buy their million dollar dream home. Um, Emily does not give her email address to people in case you were wondering. Right. So she's not actually on the cold call list that these big mega local teams are calling. Emily's not even on that list because you want to know why Emily values her time and she has enough money to avoid being on that damn list. Trust me, I am not on that list. So if you're getting caught up in your head, it's like, oh, I can't compete with these other agents. Bullcrap. My overhead is zero on transactions. Zero. Okay, when you're doing buying leads and it's not that it doesn't work, it works, right? It's just which one you want to pick up, pick your poison. Are you going to develop a referral based community driven business? Okay, social media is a key piece to that, right? That means you can bring in leads with zero dollars attached to them. It's just you've built the system and you've consistently fed the system, right? When you buy leads, you still have to consistently feed that system. It just looks like this. Right. But I can assure you that Emily, my alpha client, is not on that list. She's not on that list. She's not. And even if she is on the list, she's not responding to it. She's just not. She's not. So you then have to create content that allows them to opt in. And this is where your story matters. So I actually want someone tell me who's your favorite client? What's your favorite alpha client to work with? I'm going to build you a story right now. I'm going to build you a funnel in real time. My favorite client is like a high C. Like a female high C. Tell me what a C is. I should know, but I'm a D. They're, so they're very, they're extremely that. like organized. They're planners. They're um, like, they stay on top of the transaction better than a transaction coordinator. Okay. What is like, what is it that they're buying right now? um 
they're buying like more so like new construction, renovated homes. Like, so they look nice and new on the inside. Okay. That's what they're buying. Um, does she, um, does she work? Does she have kids? Is she yes. married? Is She's she working? Her so kids she might about... be older. She, her kids might be older, like in the, probably the same range, like 35 to 45. Okay. Um, so she, and so she cares about school districts. When I say older, I mean like college older. Oh, okay, good. So she's actually going to go like kind of downsize a little bit into what she actually wants because her kids aren't going to ruin her house anymore. Like I'm yeah, not buying yeah. what I want right now because I've got a bunch of 15 year old boys that just ruin all my right. shit anyways. Right. They might be, yeah. if some people have gone up, but yeah. like, but if they've gone it nicer, it looks polished. Yeah. So she wants it bougie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how many of these, um, how many of these deals do you need to do to hit like your target number? Um, I could probably do about four a quarter. Four a quarter. So that's 16 a year. Okay. So let's just put it into context. You need, what's her name? Let's name her. What should her name be? Um, how about Kelly? Kelly. Okay. So you need 16 Kellys, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So raise your hand. It's like, we're not going to get caught up in like, oh, I need 5,672 followers. You actually don't. You need 16 Kellys. That's it. Okay. 16 Kellys. Okay. So Kelly, what TV shows does Kelly like to watch? Mm, probably like Shonda Rhimes. What? Like Shonda Rhimes, Grey's Anatomy. Okay. okay. Learn how to get away with murder. Yeah. Probably those kind of shows. And then maybe... Um, HGTV. She's watching HGTV, right? She's watching Studio McGee. Doesn't she follow Studio McGee on what's the dream home makeover on HGTV? She's watching that hundred percent. Okay. So what you're going to do is your reels are going to be um, home tours and you're going to show her the exact houses that you want to see. So when that house mm -hmm. gets listed, you're literally making a preview appointment and you're going and you're walking it without a client. And you're literally showing 15 seconds of that house, 15 to 30 seconds of that house. And you're talking about like, oh, this just hit the market. I love previewing houses for my clients, blah, 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 blah. And then if you want to see it, right, every caption has the same thing. Every caption, every reel, every story, it's the same thing. If you've ever watched the news, this is the pattern. The pattern is the same on the news. It's the same everywhere. Okay. Hook, body, call to action. Hook, body, call to action. It's the same, right? So your hook is just listed, right? Or whatever it is. Everyone knows there's some urgency, right? In this market. Mm -hmm. So you're going to educate on urgency, right? She also is detail oriented. So you should have educational reels or like stories where like the story I just shared of like, these are the actual numbers, Oh, there's 2,739 houses that are closed or pending. Oh, she loves that. She loves that. She's like, oh, shit. Yeah, Those are the numbers, sure. right? And then you're going to say, oh, my gosh, if you want a list of houses that are coming soon, she wants to be the first to know. And she wants to know before other people know and that they don't know, right? She wants to be in the know. Yeah. We, we can't do coming soon in our MLS, so... Okay, so then you're going to network in that market and you're going to find out with other agents, you're going to know other agents and you're going to know what's coming to the market mm -hmm. before anyone else, just because you know, and then you're going to text Kelly, hey, there might be this really cool house coming. I'm not sure if you're in the market to move or not, but I, I heard about it and thought of you. Let me know if you want to see it. Got it. Because it might not be her, but it's probably, it might be her friend. Your alpha client isn't always in the market to move, but some of their friends are. So you have to link people, right? And so you're sharing things in context. And then you're going to share wins of like, oh, we just found this off-market home or whatever for so-and-so. Do, 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 do. You're sharing it in context. Oh, if you want a link to coming soon, right? And she wants to know the math. So you can do that same exact one of like, this is what the average homeowner, what market are you in, Monique? I'm in Norfolk, Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Okay, this is what the average homeowner gained in equity and they gained $50,000 in equity or whatever it is. And then you're going to talk to them about how they could do a HELOC and pull out that equity and go buy an investment property. Right. 
some of you guys, this will land better with guys than with girls, because I think women have an unfair advantage on social media, um, is that is like our little playground, right? But it's true. If you want someone to follow a guy that's doing it so well, this is one of my friends and we talk quite a bit, go follow Lord Kapdashian. He's a lender, go watch his content and tell me it's not amazing, right? Um, Sean is awesome. And um, your content should look like his. That's what your content should look like. And you should go and you should say, okay, People are, have X amount of equity in their house and you should connect them with lenders so they can take out a HELOC and then you should go back, have them, find them an investment property that they can build. And you should start building a list of people that want to receive um, investment properties. Aren't those fun, easy transactions to do? They sure are. Because you don't have to show 30 houses to that buyer. You just need to prove that the numbers work. So build that. Then you have a landing page, you collect their email address, and then every week you send them a list of properties that are great investment properties. And you're going to teach them what to do with their equity because everyone's got a crap ton of equity. Like everyone has a lot of money on paper. Okay, let's have that money create what? What's the point? Wealth. Generational wealth, right? What happens when you start teaching other people? how to create generational wealth, you become a student. And then guess who ends up creating generational wealth? You, you do. <laughs> That's what happens, right? So these are kind of like, but you have to share it in context and share it in stories. Here's the other thing. You don't just share the funnel one time. Once you build the funnel of like coming soon, you'll, you'll see me share that funnel every two weeks. I'm just going to keep adding people to that list. How many times have you seen the same Bud Light commercial with the horses pulling the carriage? How many times have you seen it? A hundred times? Every Super Bowl, you see it multiple times, right? So be consistent in your messaging, be consistent in your branding, right? And then constantly just feed that. Now, here's the thing, me posting links to a funnel is me running a commercial in the middle of my show. So you have to have a show, social media, in order to post commercials, right? So your show is actually like your own kind of transformation story of behind the scenes business building. This is what I'm doing. So one of the things, if you're in Team GoGo, -Go, you should do this every single week because you have a meeting like this every single week, write down your one takeaway and you're gonna say, oh, I was in this training and this was the one thing um, that I learned, right? And you're going to share a takeaway for your buyers or your sellers, or if you're in the agent business, you're gonna talk to agents, like know who your alpha client is. Um, great question. Am I showing the same thing over and over every two weeks or different, but same pitch? Different, but same pitch. Okay, John, do you have kids? Okay, how many times do you tell them to clean their room or to brush their teeth? Yeah, no, unmute yourself. How many times do you tell them to brush their teeth? A million. A million times. And have you thought of a hundred ways to say it? No, not really. Okay, to get them to do their homework. How many times have you told them to do their homework? Like I can think of a hundred ways that I tell my 15 year old son to not be a punk. Yeah, I bribe Part of them. being 15 is you're a punk, right? Yeah, I bribe them and do all kinds of other things. Yeah, there's like a lot of different ways for me to say the same thing to him. And same with my daughter. Part of being in junior high is that you're a brat. I don't know, it's just part of growing up. So there's lots of ways that I can say, don't be a brat, right? Um, so it's a different tone of voice. It's a different story. It's a different success story. When you close a transaction, you should have evidence of success, like have something that you do. Like these are like psychological cues. I used to do a thing where every time I closed a deal, I'd buy myself a new shirt because when I was younger, I would tell the story. I, when I was younger, this, my mom is like a, the goat of all moms. And if I was going out with a boy she liked, she'd buy me a new shirt and it would be seen on my bed. But if she didn't like the boy, nothing, right? It was just her like- That's so way funny. 
of getting her, of getting me to do what she wanted me to do, right? And it was funny and we laugh about it all the time now. I literally do the same thing with my own kids. If they're doing something that I want them to be doing, I'm all in and I like make it so easy for them. Anyways, so it's like a psychological cue. I'd be like, oh yeah, every closing day, I just like treat myself to a new shirt because it's like easy, that's small, it's not a big thing. But then people started connecting it to every time they saw me in a new shirt or just buying a new shirt, I would just like show it on my social media. Because remember my alpha client, right? Remember who my alpha client is, Okay. I'm speaking her language. Okay. So anytime like they, people would send me new shirts, like, oh my gosh, you should, this should be your next new shirt. Right. Or just funny stuff. So you start to have these inside jokes with people and it's like a psychological cue. Anytime they buy a new shirt, you want to know who they're thinking of this girl. Right. So create that like psychological cue. It could be like, I don't all sorts of different things, but there's like psychological cues and like having inside jokes with your audience. Another inside joke that developed was I did home tours every single Tuesday um, because my, a lot like Monique's, my alpha client, she likes watching HDTV, right? And so I was walking these houses and there were um, inside one house, there was like, I'm not joking or exaggerating. There were five different like brick wall installations, but the brick was like different colors. So there was a red brick, there was a black brick, there was a white brick, there was a gray brick. And as I'm going through it in real time, I'm like, wow, there's another brick wall. Okay, that's great. And I didn't say anything like negative, right? Cause I'm touring new builds, right? And so I'm very careful not to ever say anything that I don't like about them. Um, but, my audience could tell that I was like, huh, well, that doesn't make any sense. Because if the house is actually brick under there, it would all be the same brick. So how are there five different colors? Like my alpha client is like, that is a design faux pas. And they know it. And me just changing the tone of my voice and saying, huh, okay, there's another brick wall. I mean, they are laughing. And then so anytime I would see a house with a brick wall, I'd be like, well, there's the brick wall because they're in every new build home. They are in every new build home, right? And so it became this inside joke with us of like brick walls and faux brick walls. And so you build this what? Relationship. You now have a relationship. They know they like and trust you. You're noticing the same things they're noticing. So it's about knowing who your alpha client is and telling them a story that they want to opt into. Does that make sense? Build a funnel. Trust me, build your funnel and then you will figure out your show. Like, Build your funnel and know, oh, I'm going to funnel people into this. Okay, great. I'm going to show some snippets of my life. Love it. Yeah, I, I used to, when I try explaining to agents who are new or don't understand social media and how does GoGo do it and they like, she, I just don't have time. Where does she come up with the content? I literally have to say the, the aha moment for them is when I say, think of it almost as like a reality show. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be scripted. You just take a story of what you're doing. You may think this is something boring, but it, really it's, you're getting to a point, you're telling the full story, the behind the scenes and what it takes to get to that from point A to point B. Um, and I don't know. And that's when everyone's like, oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So for sure. This was Any great. Any other questions before I wrap up? Any other last minute questions? Before we wrap up too, we also have Fa um, Fabian on here. He is Randy Gamo's brother. Randy couldn't be here today for the Mortgage Minute. So, um, so he's filling in for us. So we're going to do the Mortgage Minute at the end of today's uh, training just to, to get that good value in there for everybody. Are you still here, Fabian? I see him. He muted. Let's see. Do you have him? Oh, he's connecting to audio. Okay, we'll give him one second. Okay, quick question from Julie. Yeah. An idea for funnel ideas if you're in, like in the agent business, right? Like Fabian's also in the agent business. He's doing loans. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, hey guys, we're good. how are you? We're great. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, of course. So Randy asked me to step in. First of all, I got to say, I love the energy and direction that I'm seeing here uh, from the team. Everything you're saying is, is dead on. Just to give you guys a little bit of background, uh, 
you know, I had a history in real estate. Of, I'm primarily a mortgage guy now. I was actually a CPA for a little while, uh, back from 2012 to 2015, still a licensed CPA and actually something I use on the mortgage side. Um, but, but I really love hearing what I'm saying. And honestly, it's encouraging for me just to see so many diverse backgrounds here and uh, so many people you know, kind of getting outside of their comfort zone and really just finding you know, ways to boost their business and, and you know, grab the bull by the horns, which I see, I, I was kind of paying attention to everybody's faces. I'm, I'm an empath in my own way. So I kind of read everybody's faces and uh, kind of read the emotions. And I see a lot of fear in some people and I, I see a lot of excitement in some people and that perfect mix between excitement and fear uh, and really just letting yourself get out there and, and try something different and try something new and going after your goals. I really see it in so many of the people. I think it's why you guys are in here. Uh, I think you're in the right place and I do think this will take you far. Um, just to get away from that, you know, Randy asked me to step in here today and just give you guys a little bit about, you know, the mortgage business. And I always say a, a realtor um, can always empower themselves by knowing not so much about mortgage that they're a loan officer, but enough about mortgage to where they can instruct their clients of, of different opportunities or situations or considerations that, that they should know for buying opportunities. So um, obviously anytime anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know, but I'm just gonna hit on a couple items. Uh, the date today is 3.30 and everybody knows uh, what is done in a couple weeks here. Anybody? Taxes? Taxes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so really a great time to be talking to your clients and especially your self-employed clients, right? Because your self-employed clients, they're either wrapping up their tax returns or they're planning on filing that extension. It's a really good time to just kind of gauge what that end of year profit is going to look like because this is a really good time for them to re-talk to their loan officer, update that pre-approval, see if they're still on pace to buy exactly what you want to buy them for. So even if you just call your client and say, hey, how's tax filing going? Are there any uh, you know, expectations we have or questions that we need to talk to a loan officer about? Just gives you another touch point, another good place to, to talk uh, to your clients about um, and just kind of have some discussion. Um, you know, one thing I do want to throw out there, and this is not a very common product. I, I bet a lot of you are used to uh, like conventional or FHA loans, right? That's kind of the go-to uh, bread winner of mortgages. Um, I do want to open up to something that you guys are going to see a lot more of, which is non-QM products and uh, what we call DSCR loans. So these, you know, I did see that 91% uh, of uh, uh transactions are somewhat decided by uh, a woman and uh, you know it seems like we're dealing with a lot of primary purchases in here show of hands on who's dealing with a, a good a good amount of investors I'm just looking at the screen kind of paying attention so here here and there right um, and, and a lot of these products do deal with invest investment loans but keep in mind a lot of families uh, after they own their primary are considering buying that Airbnb for um, passive income. And, you know, I was just uh, trying to book a trip to Florida to get us out of Detroit because it's too damn cold and, and the gray skies here are kind of depressing us. So I was getting out of here for a little bit. And, and uh, you know, I'm talking to a guy that's in Austin, Texas, and he has seven or eight Airbnbs going and he's collecting 10 grand a week for, you know, one property. So it's just another talking point for your clients um, that, that these DSCR loans, which is a debt service coverage ratio loan, uh, is, is a non-QM product that can help your investors um, purchase homes without even having to show income, okay? So when we think normal uh, purchase loans, we think conventional FHA, that's the standard loan jumbo, right? These are the standard loans our people use. And I feel like there's a lot of primary purchases in this room, which is awesome. You always wanna go to those products because you always wanna give your clients uh, the best product to use, the cheapest product to use uh, for their home purchase. Um, but I do want to throw out there that when you have self-employed clients, and it's my specialty with my background as uh, a CPA, we do want to throw out these non-QM options because they do give us scenarios where we can either use bank statement kind of cash flow slash um, uh, DSCR, which is potential rental income, and our ability to help investors purchase homes, and especially these families that are looking to to you know purchase an Airbnb but may not have the income uh, to do so. 
um, or, or on paper, right? Uh, these products do allow them to do these types of investments too. So uh, if you guys ever do have any questions about self-employed um, clients, uh, kind of doing some planning, uh, you know, a few months in advance, wanting to review a situation, even plan for next year, we do find ourselves doing that a lot for people. Um, you know, especially I know, uh, um, uh, I think it was, it was Amy was mentioning that she does a lot of doctors and, uh, you know, even in that case, you know, we're talking S corp returns, we're talking partnership returns, we're talking, uh, you know, all types of K1 information. So just kind of seeing that in advance and, 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 and getting that, uh, kind of, you know, knowledge before we're taking them out to showings, just so we never walk into a situation where, uh, you know, we've put time and energy into something and it wasn't perfectly planned for them, especially those high C's that, uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Ken was talking about, you know, they're going to be the ones that really want um, that extra attention to taxes. We know that the mortgage or that financial planning has to come before the purchase. So anytime we can help you guys with that, point you in the right direction, um, or even look over documents for you, just to make sure that your real estate planning is first covered by a proper mortgage plan. Uh, we're always happy to do that for you and we're your partners in that. So any questions for me? I know I just threw a lot of information out real quick. So that's great. That was awesome. Um, can you put your information, your contact info in the chat for us Absolutely. so that everyone has it? Yep, that yep. would be wonderful. Yep. Again, I'm Fabian Gamma with National Mortgage out of Troy, Michigan. Um, literally anytime you guys have any questions, concerns, just want some direction, just want to run an idea past us. I don't care if it's 1130 at night and you're with your client, you call me, I'll answer as long as uh, my wife's not after me. <laughs> and that was a that was a DSCR loan, correct? Yep, yep, debt service coverage ratio loan. So especially like, you know, sometimes what happens is people have 10 conventional mortgages already. You probably don't see that too often because it's usually heavier invested people. These non-QM loans will let you go to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 houses. And especially these people that are really heavy on Airbnbs, which I'm seeing more and more people want to get involved with it. Um, it's just another method of them not considering income so the loan's easier because as long as the potential rental income from the property covers uh, the mortgage payment, uh, they're in the clear on the financing. So uh, you're gonna see more and more of these and they're gonna get more and more competitive. Um, but I just wanna bring that out there because we, we want everybody to start kind of thinking outside of conventional jumbo FHA because these non-QM products are gonna get more and more interesting and be a part of the normal purchase environment, um, especially like California, Florida, Arizona, you know, these places that have a lot of borrowers that don't show income tax because of the nature of their work, um, this becomes a very interesting uh, 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 product to be used, utilized for them. But yes, a DSCR loan, yep. And I, and I can send out some uh, general information about it if you guys want to share it, just so you understand what it is. Uh, but definitely yeah. don't, yeah, don't ever, you know, uh, you, you want to turn a blind eye to these non-QM loans just because uh, really, I mean, if you asked me about these two years ago, I barely knew anything about them because we were so busy with jumbo and, and conventional and uh, FHA. But these days, you know, people are getting creative with their financing. It's just, it's something that everybody should know about, not only when you're accepting an offer, but when you're making an offer and, and knowing what to expect. So. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Throw us some, uh, Shoot us some information over and we'll make sure we get it out to everybody. So yeah, they yep. have. Uh, yep, I'll give some general information and I will share my name, phone number, and email. And again, anytime anybody has a question, just wants to chat, throw, Thank a, you. throw a tax situation past me. Those are my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> awesome. Well, this was great. Um, thanks so much, uh, Fabian. And then Amy. This was amazing. You're amazing. Did you wanna, was there anything you needed to, that you wanted to add to wrap up, to finish up? This was so full of value. Um, I don't I think, think so. Nice. I think the one thing, the one question that was in here a couple of times was um, 
talking about how to do an agent growth funnel if you're wanting to do agent growth inside your business. And the best way to do agent growth is one, set up a Calendly link so that people can schedule a call with you. Um, make sure you're linking them to videos where they can learn more about eXp before they get on a phone call with you um, because that vets them quite a bit and you'll find it's a big waste of time if they don't like it anyway. So let them, do, like that due diligence already exists. Um, so you can have them watch GoGo's video of EXP Explained or whatever. Um, and then every time you're in one of GoGo's meetings, your recipe after that is get on Instagram in your stories and say, oh, I just got off a meeting like with my national group team GoGo, want to know what I learned. And it can even be like a still picture of you where you text that and you allow them to say yes or no. You want them to opt in and be like, well, yeah, I want to know what you learned. And then you're going to share a key takeaway. It takes literally your video, you, your takeaway cannot be longer than one minute. If it's 30 seconds, that's even better, right? So just one thing, just one thing. And then you're going to say, if you're interested, if you would like access to a national group of agents, you know, um, if you're not, masterminding every single week with a national group of agents and want to learn more, click here, right? And it invites them to schedule a phone call. Awesome. And that's the recipe for it. So you can do that every single week. And so really now- you By telling them the thing you learned, just actually tell them the thing you learned. Don't yeah. hold back on 80% of people aren't going to implement anyway. So it doesn't even matter. Just give them the information. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Here's. Um, and then ha click the link to have them schedule a call. Um, John was asking how long should it take for social media to convert? And that's like really up to you. How many at-bats are you going to take, right? So if you're not in the batter's box swinging the bat, you're never going to hit the home run. But when you get in and you start swinging, yeah, you're going to figure it out real quick. It's more about discipline and consistency. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Well, this was amazing. And with Team Google, guys, not only do we have one day a week that you can use for content, we have four trainings a week. We have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whether it's production, technology, agent attraction, onboarding, just you know, getting familiar with the system. So it, we have so much training. There's always something. You can always get at least a little nugget from, from any of those trainings to use and share um, to help build your, your following. 100%. Thank awesome. you so much for having me today. Thanks, guys. This was amazing. Um, we'll see you guys next week. If you have any questions, you guys know how to reach us. Thanks. Okay. See you. Thank you. This is awesome.